paying tax in Denmark. Paying tax in Denmark. Tax on gas. Yeah, I like paying taxes. Today I'm diving into a topic that really gets people fired up. Income taxes. I will compare how much you pay in income tax if you earn $10,000 per month in Denmark and in the US respectively. In the end of this video, you will know exactly how much you have left in your pocket after tax in each country. So stay tuned as I'm going to break down step by step deductibles and everything you need to know about Danish and American income taxes. And as a bonus, I also reveal a tool that you can have for free that estimates your taxes in Denmark at the end of this video. But before we get started, a little disclaimer. I'm not an accountant and my comparison in this video is covering the basics of a person who works a job. That's it. I will not cover other asset classes like stocks, LLCs, bitcoins or your real estate in this video. But I might do it in another video. So there you go. A good reason for subscribing to this channel. Come on. With that out of the way, let's get started. Denmark is known for having one of the highest tax rates in the world. Yikes. But also for offering a lot in return. The Danish tax system operates with a progressive tax rate, meaning the more you earn, the higher percentage you pay on the last dollar or Danish kroner. For simplicity, I will compare in US dollars. Our taxpayer makes $10,000 monthly salary in Denmark, which is 67,600. This is an above average salary in Denmark. Our gal here is probably senior engineer with 10 years of experience or maybe project manager in a large company. She probably lives in Copenhagen as well. To compare, the average salary in Denmark is around 47,000 DKK countrywide. I chose $10,000 because it's a nice round number and if you are considering moving to Denmark coming from the US and non-EU country, my hypothesis is that you have a long education and thus would earn more than the average here. But you are of course welcome to challenge that hypothesis in the comments below. In Denmark, you can deduct your pension before any tax is paid, which makes pension payments something you should very much consider. That is if you count on retiring in Denmark, because if you don't, then you might want to get as much paid out as possible now. Oh my god. For the sake of this example, let's say that our taxpayer here pays 15% in pension and thus deducts $1,500. You also pay 15 USD in ATP, which is the state pension. That is what you get when retiring if you don't have a private pension. First tax a Dane has to pay is labor market contribution or Arbeitsmarktbetrag. It's an 8% flat tax that's earmarked uh, for the state's expenses related to the labor market. For example, subsidizing the private unemployment benefit scheme called ACASA. Because you have to pay this flat tax, it also becomes an argument for signing up and paying to a casa, which is this private but publicly subsidized unemployment insurance that will secure you up to $3,000 per month oh my God! for two years consecutive if you lose your job. So not that bad actually. Now it's time to factor in the remaining deductions before the real income tax kicks in. Before paying a tax, or as income tax is called in Denmark, you can make all sorts of deductions. And I'm just going to mention the most common ones. First and foremost, all Danes have a yearly deduction called a Sonfradal. It's a deduction worth $610 per month. Moreover, you can also deduct your unemployment insurance, a CASA payment, as I just mentioned. And you can also deduct 20% of your interest payments, losses on investments and income from renting out property. You can get deduction if you travel to your workplace and it's more than 12 kilometers away from your home as well. I've included an official link below where you can search up all the possible deductions that you can get in Denmark. And I highly recommend you to check out and see all the money I've saved you. You can thank me later or in the comments below. But for the purpose of this example, let's say our taxpayer here has deductions worth of $806. 
Now we finally made it to the main income tax, which is called A tax or A scat. A scat is several taxes combined and it's calculated to give you one percentage for the whole year so that you are not progressively taxed a lot at the end of the year versus the beginning of the year. That makes sense. Individual tax percentage and deductions are sent to the company where you work, who then handles the salary payout and tax payments for you. As an employee, uh, you just receive your money after tax to your bank account each month. Typically, the income tax percentage in Denmark is around 40% for most things. My percentage is 43% to give an example. ASCAT includes municipal tax, health contribution and state tax. It also includes church tax, which is a 0.87% tax that you can easily avoid by simply deregistering from the Danish state church. If you are signed up for it, you better check that. In our example, let's say that our taxpayer's percentage is 43, as in my case. If that's the percentage we're working with, our taxpayer for this example pays $3,010 in income tax and she is left with $4,796 per month in her pocket. And we shouldn't forget the $1,500 that goes into her private pension fund as well. Now let's take a look at a taxpayer in the US. For a $10,000 monthly salary, you're looking at an annual income of $120,000. The famous six figures that generally signifies that you made it in the US. Congratulations, you are off the hook. Here's how it breaks down in the US for a single person in California. In the US of A, you can deduct pension contributions as well up to $22,500 in the so-called 401k plan. But let's say that our taxpayer in the US deducts the same pension as in the Danish example, namely $1,500 per month and also has other deductibles worth of $806 per month as in the Danish example. Then the federal marginal tax rate is 22% and the Californian marginal tax is 10.23%. Disclaimer here is that some US states actually operate with a state tax of 0%. Not bad. In the US, you also pay FICA, which is the tax to support Social Security and Medicare. It's a flat tax of 7.65%. In total, the income tax paid by our American taxpayer is around 25%. She pays $2,447 in total income tax per month. So the take home pay here, the money in her pocket or the disposable income each month is $6,053, while her Danish counterpart lands $4,796 in her bank account. We could stop here and conclude that the Californian taxpayer has about $1,200 more dollars, that is, more in her pocket every month to spend, and therefore that it's better to live in the US. But the two countries don't provide the same level of public welfare and therefore the American needs to decide if she wants to pay for health insurance, unemployment insurance and save up for college to her children. These choices are already made for the Dane and she can count on free universal health care, free education on all levels, unemployment support for two years up to $3,000 per month parental leave of one year and five years of vacation. Essentially a healthy American without kids who is willing to take health risks related to serious chronic illnesses could basically spend all of the 1,200 every month without a sweat. But let's assume that the American want the same coverage available to the Dane, as well as unemployment insurance and college education for her child or children. In that case, she needs to put aside at least $500 for health insurance, $300 for college savings per kit, and save some money as well for a rainy day in case she loses her job. That of course depends on her severage package with her company. Overall, we are probably not so far away from spending the extra $1,200 on these expenses and then it all sort of equals out if we have the same risk profile. But 
as you can hear, it starts to depend a lot on individual choices and preferences, but also about the cards you were dealt in life. For example, what if you are alone with three kids? What if your employer doesn't have a good uh, severage package, for example? What if you have a chronic disease? What if your employer does not have a good health insurance? What if a family member has chronic diseases or is without a job or is addicted to opioids or something like that? What if you lose your job altogether? The average American earns about $64,000 a year, which is about half of the example used in this video he will have to make tough choices to answer some of the above questions. In this video, I used an example of a high paying American who will benefit much more from the free choice and the low tax rate in the US. If you have been dealt a good hand in the US, you are probably living a really comfortable life provided that you keep your job and your family don't have massive health issues. In Denmark, the welfare applies to everyone and thus to support the unfortunates, the high earners pay a fee. This is the Danish social contract which benefits the weakest individuals in society and takes a toll, you could say, on the strongest. At the end of the day, this is what you buy into should you want to move to Denmark. You can say that you are essentially forced to be solidaric with the less fortunate around you. In the description below, I link to my Danish tax calculator that you can have for free. It's a simple tool that can give you an idea of what you will pay in taxes in Denmark. It's pretty basic, but it will give you some idea. If you like this topic of taxes, I would also highly recommend the video that I made about Denmark and whether Denmark is a socialist country or not. You can find that video up here. And I also made another video that takes you through the real pay slips of different professions in Denmark so that you can see how much they earn and you can see that video up here. Subscribe to the channel if you want more of these videos about living and traveling in Denmark. Until my next video, take care.